Hi guys, another video. Um, so <laughs> the big question here for me is, um, well, I made a mistake in the previous video about historical interest rates and also the perfect passive portfolio. I said, is it worth while to start uh, investing in this passive portfolio that I was presenting there and that you can also see here, uh, I call it the PP world, the permanent portfolio world portfolio, where you have 75% stocks and 25% gold. And um, um, I said, well, actually, if you plan to invest for a couple of years, yes, it's worthwhile to do that. Uh, because on a yearly basis, yes, it's true. You can see the results here on a yearly basis uh, can be negative or positive. So if you have cash, you want to protect it against inflation. Should you invest uh, in this permanent portfolio world, uh, PP world? And um, I said, well, if it's for a couple of years, yes, because odds are that, yes, you may have one negative year, uh, but like... And indeed, here you have like three negative years. Eh? So, uh, but if you like take five years over a five time or five year horizon, you will always have a positive return, um, and so uh, a return much higher than um, uh, than zero, uh, and so protect yourself against the inflation. Uh, that is about five percent per year, uh, to my estimate. Um, and, 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 and so if you invest for a five-year horizon, yes, you can do it. But if it's shorter, if it's only one year, be careful because one-year returns can be negative uh, and seriously negative even, minus 30%. So you invest for one year and you know you're going to need the money after one year. Uh, well, you can have a loss of uh, minus 30%. That was the worst, worst uh, return here uh, since uh, the start of this uh, portfolio in 1928. So almost 100 years of returns. Uh, you also have some bad years here in the Great Depression of one, one year minus 33%. But, uh, but uh, that was uh, never seen again until 2008, well, almost 100 years later, where you have another minus 30%. But it's very rare. Uh, but you do get quite often a year where you have minus 5% every five years or uh, you have like minus 5% year or a minus 10% year. But here it took like 10 years of waiting before you had that. But okay, um, uh, for all periods, you take five-year returns, uh, even here to the Great Depression. Yes, you have a couple of very bad years, but you take five years, you have these very good years also. And, and so you're, you're making money. Actually, no, you're not making money. You just have uh, the 5% per year that uh, the basis uh, is the debasement of the currency. So if you just put it in cash, uh, you will lose 5% per year, but you put it in a PP, you, uh, you have that 5% per year. Um, and actually it's a lot more. Huh? Uh, you don't have 5% per year. On average, you have 8.8%, so almost 9% per year, which is the same as if you would go all in uh, on stocks. You also have 9% per year, 9.1, a little bit more. These stocks are dividends included uh, and actually also taking into account uh, tax um, payments on dividends. You still have 9.1%, that's very good, but with the PP you have the same um, and it's in a much more stable way thanks to the gold part that's in it. But gold on itself only has like 4.7%, uh, so this is very interesting. But um, the, the, the big question here is actually the big mistake I made is, 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 is actually it's not true. You don't have to have a five year horizon to decide to uh, invest because um, it's a game of odds investing. And so what are the odds here uh, that what is your expected return and your expected return on a yearly basis is 8%. But yes, due to volatility, sometimes it's like minus 30%, sometimes it's plus 30% or plus 40%. Uh, some years even probably uh, here 40% in 1979. Uh, so, uh, so uh, but on average it's 8% or 9%. And that is your expected return. Um, now you can say, yeah, but I, I need the money for sure in one year. And so I cannot risk like, okay, I will have 8% most likely. But actually, um, on average, but actually, if I invest only one year, it can be a lot less or a lot more. So what should I do? Well, 
okay, if you have a, a cancer treatment to go and it will cost you, let's say, 50, 000, or let's say 100,000 US dollars uh, to save your life and you really need that in one year, well, should you invest it here? Uh, you need to pay that bill in one year for sure. Well, okay, that's up for discussion. You could say, no, don't invest it because uh, you could have minus 30% in one year and then you have only 70K left and you can't pay your bills. So don't do it. But this is a very rare situation. Who needs that money for sure in one year? Almost no one. Huh? Um, uh, 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 and, and so actually, like for me, I, I need that money to invest in crypto when the market corrects. But um, um, if the market goes down, I will just invest less in crypto. Uh, if the market goes up, I will invest more in crypto. It's not that important. Uh, but what is important for me is to protect that cash that's now sitting on the sidelines against inflation. And even though it, I expect it only to invest uh, for one year, I do have to take this bet because my expected return is 8% per year, 9% per year. I may be unlucky and have a negative year, uh, but it's still a bet worth taking because my average expected return is 9%. So, or let's call it 8% because what's not included in these returns, of course, transaction costs when you buy uh, assets and sell assets, you have the transaction fee, but you also have the spread you're losing. So, so, so that is not included here, uh, except actually it is not included, I think, is it? I don't think so, no. But many uh, index funds do realize, like these are the returns, not from the index funds themselves, but from the index. Huh? And in the index, I don't think they take this into account. But an index fund does have to uh, take these uh, costs, these transaction fees. But what you notice that some index funds actually succeed in following the index without, with, and even having these uh, expenses and they still succeed in following the index. But usually you will see if you that the, the difference between the index fund and the index is a, a few percentage, I, it is a little bit, and that's due to these transaction fees. So that's not included here. So let's call it 8% per year, not 9. But um, so, 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 so for me now, the question is, okay, if I invest right now, and I, I just updated the sheet up until today. So up until today, this year, 2018 is not fully over, but... Um, um, up until today, the PP has lost 5% uh, and stocks have actually lost 5% and gold has lost 5% up until today, year to date. Um, uh, but, but this also updates the 10 year real, yearly returns a lot because when I was analyzing this before, I said, wow, the PP actually had a terrible 10 the past 10 years, 0% per year, whereas the average is 8% uh, per year, 0%, that means like, and that's this green line here. Sometimes you see like if you only invest in stocks blue, you have sometimes 10 year returns of the past 10 years was 10% per year here, but then it goes down and here the past 10 years is like minus 3% per year. So if you just invest in stocks, it's very volatile. Um, uh, if you just invest in gold, it's also very, very volatile. But if you take the average, you have the green line as a PP. And so you see that, okay, there is a point here in 1970 where the PP has um zero percent return for the past 10 years not good but it's not well it's not good but this is after inflation eh? uh, so actually you didn't lose anything here you just didn't make any money after inflation and you do count a high inflation here of six percent per year i have here eh? so after inflation you didn't lose anything with the pp um and, and that's very good but you also didn't make any money and that's a, a poor a relative poor performance because sometimes with the pp you make after real inflation about eight percent per year and it goes to zero percent per year goes back here to ten percent per year um and then it goes back to zero percent per year the past 10 years in 2002 uh, but then it goes up a little down a little bit. and here you have the first negative period you see in um and that's um here uh sorry where is this 2008. So here, after real inflation, you have minus 2% per year with the PP at the end of 2008. Uh, so that's a, a negative year, but, but that's very rare. Uh, as you can see over this line, uh, it is uh, uh, almost always positive for the past 10 years. 
um, after real inflation. But uh, I was looking uh, a couple of uh, weeks ago when I was making this video, I said, hmm, we're still, at, we're also again at 0% returns for the permanent portfolio the past 10 years. That was at the end of 2017. Um, so actually, it's a good moment to invest in the PP because, well, usually, uh, well, also are very high that the average returns will go back up a lot for the PP and uh, I will go back up to uh, what are the peaks here. Uh, the peaks are about, I, I, you can see it on the chart more easily, in the 50s, 60s, about 8% per year and again in the 80s and 90s, about 10% per year after real inflation. These are the highs. So. Um, it's a very good time to start investing in the PP if the returns have just been very bad the past 10 years. But that's also because uh, in, at the end of 2017, the year 2008 was included to calculate uh, the 10-year returns. That's why it's still very bad. But here, as of this year, we're not including over the past 10 years, uh, 2008 anymore. We started 2009. And so the average returns suddenly jump a lot. Uh, for the PP to uh, 3% per year the past 10 years uh, as of today. So um, it's not such a great opportunity uh, anymore. Uh, well, uh, but, but of course, this is always delayed the past uh, 10 years returns. Um, but OK, um, so so so. But this will go. Let's let's go back to to, to where it was also zero percent, like or, or or low. And like, are these good times to start investing in the PP when it's low? Yes, of course. Like here, here is very low. You have again zero percent. Okay. So what are the uh, the returns of the PP after you have you reach these kind of lows? Well, extremely good. Look, every year you make like uh, about twenty percent on average. Uh, here is again very low. What is the what are the returns after it, it has been very low again the years after very good eh? about ten percent per year. Um, let's go back in time here. It was a long time ago from seventy one that you had poor returns of the PP. But what are the returns the years after? Extremely good, you see, about twenty percent per year eh? for a very long time. So 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 that's why and or here we go back to nineteen fifty. In the past 10 years, poor returns. So what are the returns after that? Very good, 20% eh? per year on average here, um, or about 15. So so that's why I was thinking, wow, actually the PP is, is, is a very good time to get into that. And actually that's still true today, because um, at the end of 2017, actually, if you would have stepped in, well, by today you would have lost 5%. Uh, so, so, so actually, it's even better time now to step in. And why is that? Well, because the global index of stocks uh, lost for the year about five percent, and gold also lost about five percent. So you get uh, all your assets uh, five percent cheaper uh, today compared to the end of uh, last year, 2017. So that's a good thing. And in the long term, over the next couple of years, it expect is expected to be uh, uh, to have very good returns. So, so, so the PPP. So if you then look at, okay, what are my odds if I step in now, but I'm only going to be there for one or two years, uh, what are my odds to make money here? It's uh, very good. Uh, so, so, so that's why I, I, I um, and also, does it make sense to invest if your time horizon, horizon is only one year? Yes, it makes sense. Uh, a lot of sense because your average expected return is 8% uh, per year. Uh, that's uh, at about two percent higher than real inflation, uh, and, uh, and 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 that's what really drives me to start uh, doing this uh, because it's painful. If you think about how much you lose five percent per year, I have my cash on the sidelines for one year now. I do a calculation: how much fiat I lost. It's a lot, uh, and 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 so right now it's a good climate to invest. Why? Because. Um, people are negative on the stock market again. It's, it's like going sideways or correcting a little bit this year, and it's like drama, drama, drama. We're going to get a big correction here, but this is not um, supported. Uh, uh, like the odds for a big correction, a la 2008, is very low uh, right now. Uh, why? Because the average returns of stocks are very, very bad over the past 10 years. Um, uh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, it's not bad anymore. 
in 2017 at the end of the year because you include 2008 it was only five percent per year and that's below the average of nine percent but right now uh, we don't include 2008 anymore we start at 2009 if you look at the average returns of stocks uh, since 2009 it's 10 percent per year that's is that good yes it's good but it's extremely good no it's just the average because the average is nine percent since the start of 1920 uh eight here the average uh is nine percent per year so today we're at ten percent so we're just on the average averages uh, the returns of stocks is uh an average return now actually i should update this chart it's not including uh my latest information let me do that quickly and then i come back yeah i'm sorry i lost my uh, window here but uh my camera window but uh let's continue um so uh, i was unable to update this chart here but it is important to update it here because if if you if you if you if you if you include not 2017 but you go to uh as of today 2018 because uh, 2008 drops off the very bad returns of that year the average returns do bump up a lot higher here so you can see a jump uh, from from average returns of is 10 percent for stocks the past 10 years but for the pp it's nine percent per year the past 10 years and after inflation three percent per year the past 10 years and that is actually also the average return of the pp so, so as of today um when you step in you know that the past 10 years the returns have been just average or average so actually um uh that's that's important to note but uh, i think that um the question the big question here for stocks and for the pp is uh, what's the trend here um uh, are we in a downward trend in returns or an upward trend in returns uh, for the pp then uh, but let's look first at stocks and gold uh, uh, stocks okay uh upward trend return down up down and now where are we gonna go for stocks ah, up eh? so so for stocks even though we're now at average returns of 10 percent per year well they can be a lot higher uh here they're like uh, 20 percent per year huh? so they can be a lot higher and they probably are gonna go up a lot higher the average returns for stocks because the trend now is up it comes from very low and uh and it's been building up and it's probably going to continue to go up over the next 10 years uh for for gold well what is the trend uh low returns uh, high returns so trend is down up down up down and where are we now in a downward trend for returns of gold so probably the next 10 years is going to go a lot lower the real returns and the actual returns of gold so that's in a downtrend what's the case for the pp well the pp is the green line and the Greek PP, since it only has 25% gold, but 75% stocks, it follows more the trend of stocks uh, and less the trend of gold. And so for, for, for the PP, is the same story as uh, the stocks. The trend is up, down, up, down, down, up, down. But now it's up, and so it's probably going to go up and up a lot more, uh, the PP returns. So even though we already did a big uh, leap here, uh, by not including 2008, the average returns are already on av average today. And so we're not here at the 0%, we're at the 3%, so a little bit higher here. Uh, so the returns of PP are now average. Um, uh, after real real inflation, it's about 3% per year. And in US dollar measured, it's now about 9% per year. Uh, but um, uh, but um, uh, it's probably going to go a lot higher uh, to uh, the P, to the peaks that we've seen before. Uh, actual dollar returns of the P uh, have been also around 17% per year here, uh, peaking out 15%, uh, 10%. But if you look after inflation, uh, now it's 3%. But after inflation, you can see that more clearly on the chart here. You often go after inflation to about 8% per year. Uh, that's the peak after real inflation so that's where we're heading for the pp over the next 10 years probably and those returns will probably come from stocks not from the gold part 
Uh, another question to ask is, of course, uh, and I added this column here, I didn't have that before, but the interest rates have a big impact on the economic climate. And so are the e interest rates rising or falling? And, uh, and here you can see uh, also the clear trend here. Uh, this is after real inflation. Uh, you can see average interest rates since 1928 have been 4%. But since inflation is about six percent, uh, real returns have been only have been ever every, every year uh, for cash basically uh, minus two percent per year. That's why I also excluded cash from um, from the PP uh, as well as bonds because the real returns are uh, negative uh, on average. But uh, but it is interesting to see what is the trend with interest rates here and what does that mean for the PP or for stocks or for gold. And you can see that the trend has been uh, downwards here, uh, but then upwards for the past 10 years uh, and then uh, peaked out in the 1980s. Uh, and then uh, uh, since then we're in a downward trend for interest rates, but we just reached the bottom of that and now we just started an upward trend in interest rates and we have a beautiful history here uh, what happens when you go from a bottom and you have rising interest rates again uh, well you can see clearly here what happens it's a disaster for gold uh, gold gets punished very hard with rising interest rates but at the peak at the end of the rising interest rates but that takes many many decades then suddenly gold shoots through the moon and inflation perceived inflation also but the first few decades of rising interest rates are uh, a disaster for gold and are very good for stocks so this is likely also confirms uh what, what we're seeing here that we will likely get for the next 10 years a very good period of stocks and a very bad period for gold is also validated by the interest rate cycle so voila uh, i think this is very interesting uh, and for me enlightening to realize that actually even if you're investing for a short term um even if it's only one year and even if it's only one month uh, like uh, it doesn't like you can just look at the average expected returns and decide uh, whether it uh, makes sense to invest rational sense um, and uh, yeah, if you're willing to take a hit, uh, which always can happen in the short term, it, uh, it, it makes a lot of sense to do that. Um, and, and I think that's how you need to think because you always, as an investor, have well, cash positions. And so you always have to make that decision. What will I do with the cash? Do I keep it on the sideline and wait for opportunities and not invest it in anything? Um, most investors do this and i think this is a, a real capital mistake uh, because uh, cash uh, can be invested um, also um, and um, uh, and stay very liquid um, uh, and i think the average returns of an investor go up a lot if you do that um, because if you like Okay, there is a price to pay. If you invest cash in a PP world, yeah, it can you can have very negative years. And right, you, of course, that happens right when there is a big opportunity in the market to invest. So that's true. But on average, your returns on your cash is eight percent, and um, and 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 most investors fail to have that um, and. Mm, yeah, I think a big piece of that is in um, is, uh, is is in uh, yeah uh, not uh, letting the value of your cash go down. Um, I hope I'm making sense. Mm, and um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, please like the video, comment below if you have a different opinion. If you think I'm overlooking something, uh, let me know. And I will post also the link here uh, the sheet uh, that you can click on and see the sheet in detail. It's very interesting uh, to see the history here. Um, and uh, please watch my other videos on this uh, sheet. They are very interesting. I discuss more about uh, the amount of money that's being printed um, by uh, the Fed and how that uh, impacts um, real inflation, but also uh, for the future, uh, what you can expect here. Yeah? 
Uh, I will just say that the summary people think because a lot of money has been printed since 2008 that we will get massive inflation but we've seen this in the past also that the Fed printed a lot uh, for example here in uh, the 30s during the Great Depression uh, as well as the 40s during the war and what happened there was also big predictions of a massive inflation uh, but um, actually what happened was that um, uh, after these periods, the Fed always stopped printing uh, and had uh, an, uh, 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 basically didn't print anything uh, for uh, 10 or 20 years. Uh, and, um, and that's why, um, um, well, the average inflation is uh, what it is. And that's uh, the amount of money they print here, minus 2%, and that's 6% per year. Uh, so even though you have certain outlier years, and we just had a, a lot of them here in, in, in the financial crisis of 2008, uh, because you have many other years and they've just started with that, that they don't print uh, anything or even uh, uh, take some money out of circulation. Um, uh, the average of the amount of money they print is uh, still only 6% per year. If you Even if you include these, uh, these very high uh, years of massive money printing. And so I expect the same to happen again here over the next 10 years. Uh, the Fed will just not print um, um, anything. Uh, and and that's why um, yeah the averages uh, will stay uh, low of the amount of money printed. Allez, low. It's all relative. I don't think that's low if you print six percent and actually eight percent per year. Uh, but okay, we, we, we deduct two percent for economic growth. That's only two percent per year. But then uh, only six percent. Then uh, that prices go up. Um, uh, but that's of course massive. And that's the big problem with the cash position. Every year they do. Oh, actually, that's not true. Some years they print a lot. Some years uh, they actually take money out of circulation. But on average, they print so much, uh, 8% per year, that the value of your money goes down with 6% per year. And that's a real big problem for a cash position. Uh, that's a huge loss. And you notice that just by the average price increases. Uh, every year it's about 5 to 6% for if you take the average of all assets, goods, services, um, uh, that's about the price increase for the US dollar. And so uh, that's a big problem for portfolios. If you keep cash on the sideline, you pay. You are the one paying for uh, the money. If the money prints, if the government prints money, put it in their pocket, it's directly stolen from your cash, cash position. Uh, directly. So that's that's a high price to pay. Uh, and so uh, for me, uh, I just did that one year, uh, but I made a, a mistake uh, that I thought like, yeah, my time horizon is too short to invest it in something like the PP, but that's also a, a thinking a mistake. It's not true um, unless you have to pay uh, that fixed amount of money for a cancer treatment to, to save your life. That's not true because um, I will invest that money and so it can be more or less. Uh, that's not so important. What is very important is that I can rest, uh, uh, I can relax that the, the value of my money is not going down because I have an expectation to invest in one year, but maybe it will be two years. Uh, well, that's a lot of money I'm losing uh, to, due to inflation. Uh, and so it's important to protect that. Uh, and and if, if, if I'm unlucky, uh, we had with the outcome, we just go uh, for another one to two years of uh, poor returns for the PP. I will lose maybe 10 or 20 percent. And, and that's true, but that's not a real problem. Uh, on average, that will likely not happen. It's most likely that actually I will actually not lose 10, 20 percent. It will make uh, 10, 20 percent. And after inflation, I will have uh, profits uh, doing this invest. That's the most likely outcome. And that's why it makes a, a rational sense for me to do so. Thanks so much for watching and wish you all a great day. Please share with your friends uh, that also invest money uh, because I think this is a very, uh, very uh, valuable uh, lesson um, for any uh, person that uh, invests money over their lifetime. Bye.